we can see how God was with his people, how he guided them and protected them, defeated their enemies. The Bible is full of these stories. If we talk to the people that are around us, if we talk to our church family, we will hear more stories about things God has done for us. Little things that he's done for us, big things that he's done for us. We will hear story after story after story of how good God is. If we look backwards on our own lives, we'll see how God's hand was on us, guiding us and helping us even when we weren't aware of it. But not all of us get to have these great big stories. I never got to fight Goliath. Thank God. (laughs) If we're not sure that God's been doing this, how can we be sure that he will do it for us? See, I've heard the stories from Pastor Ron about the things that God has done at Bethel since he came in 1971. But now I'm the senior pastor. How can I be sure that God's still going to do stuff like that? After all, I don't have this glorious head of silver hair. (laughs) I don't have the experience that he has. How do I know God's just not going to leave me flopping around like a fish on the dock? Well, Apostle Paul again tells us in Philippians chapter 4, this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. There is nothing that God does for anyone else that he won't do for you. Nothing. Well, how come he hasn't? I don't know. Perhaps I don't trust him like I think I do. Perhaps my relationship with him is not resulting in courage because I'm more comfortable in fear. Perhaps I'm not getting out of the way and letting him do what he wants to do. Have you ever had somebody help you and it makes the job three times as long? (laughs) I keep looking over at Todd because he's a contractor. Can you imagine what would happen to one of his jobs if I decided I needed to help him? Where's the hammer? I need to nail stuff. He'd go, hammers. We don't use hammers. I'm thinking about things in the 1960s. He's thinking about things now. They use those cool nail guns, all that cool stuff. Maybe God could get it done faster if I could get out of the way and just follow the path that he sets for me. God doesn't play favorites with his kids. What he does for others, he'll do for you. By the way, Mary was scared out of her wits. How did she react? She obeyed. She said, let everything happen just as you've said. Joseph was terrified about what people were going to say about him. But how did he react? He obeyed. He married Mary and raised Jesus. The shepherds, the Bible says, were terrified. And they were told not to fear. How did they react? They said, let's go see this thing. And they went. 2,000 years later, we're still celebrating. King Herod was scared. How did he react? He sent out a squad to murder all the male children that were born in those years because he was so scared of what would happen. Sometimes just for fun, 
Look through the Gospels in the New Testament and see what happened to Herod. He didn't obey. He did what he thought needed to be done. And it did not end well for him. So folks, whatever you hear on the news, whatever you see, whatever people tell you, remember the most common command in the Bible. Do not fear.